Hey guys, Taria here from Taria's Sketchy Adventures and UrbanSketchingWorld.com. So today we're going to talk about drawing exercises, which I know on the face of it doesn't sound like the most exciting thing in the world, but stick with me because some of these are actually really fun. So first things first, let's go get a cheap exercise book with plain paper in it. Those kind of books like the ones we used to use when we were school kids. They're cheap and you won't mind filling the pages with nonsense, otherwise known as drawing exercises. Now, on to a bit of hand yoga. Close your eyes, breathe, zen out for a moment, and stretch your fingers out like this. Do circles with your wrists and your elbows, and now from the shoulders, remember to go in one direction and then the other direction. Do you feel like you're watching yoga with Adrienne right now? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> So just like vocalists or those people who actually exercise, it's really a good idea to warm up your bits and bobs before sketching, especially if you're in for a two hours plus urban sketching session. And you know, it may save on those medical bills down the line. Also, don't forget your poor back. My posture isn't the best and it's really something I'm trying to consciously work on lately. For these exercises, feel free to use what you want. I'm going to be using a pencil to start off with at least, and you can use whatever pencil you want. It can be a clutch pencil, a wood pencil, mechanical pencil, whatever you want, doesn't matter. Here I'm using just a normal wooden pencil, and it is a B grade graphite in it. And I find that B is the sweet spot where it can produce a tight line, but it can also have a bit of softness for shading and getting those looser lines as well. Okay, so the first exercise, we're going to start making circles and we want to keep things loose. So a great way to loosen up is to hold your pencil much further back than you may usually. And you want to make sure you've got some nice amount of space. You want to try and be quick and loose with those circles. This is where the elbow and the shoulder comes in. Make yourself some nice space for your whole arm to move while making these circles. This is quite a simple exercise, it's a bit underrated though, it's a really nice way to just warm up your arm and your elbow and your shoulder and it's great to see just how circular you can get those circles by trying to draw with your fingers and your wrist versus using the whole of your arm. Okay, so now let's move on to straight lines. So just make some straight lines across the page, see how straight you can make them, draw them parallel to each other and see how even you can get them. Then draw them at different angles, down the page, diagonally, left to right, right to left. Which feels more comfortable for you? Which produces a more accurate result, a straighter line? And this is interesting because it kind of helps you understand why turning your page of your sketchbook to draw a straight-ish, confident line can really help. Continue this exercise but with shorter lines and more tightly spaced, i.e. hatching. So practice hatching at different angles and with different spacing between the lines. And then after you've practiced this, move on to cross hatching and this is something I definitely want to get better at this year as I'm keen to incorporate more of it into my sketching. I don't really use much hatching or cross hatching at all and I do really love the effect. I always think of Tommy Kane when I think of hatching and if you haven't seen his work, oh, definitely go check it out. So cross hatching is just where you are literally crossing the original lines of your first set of lines. So if you went vertically, you might go horizontally, 90 degree angle, but you can also then add another layer of diagonal lines on top of that. And you can actually add a fourth layer of diagonal lines in the opposite direction. So you can really build up lots of different tones using cross hatching. So you can continue on and practice drawing other geometric shapes like squares and triangles. And you can also replace any straight lines you've drawn with uh, wiggly lines and try and get those parallel and even. All those kind of things are going to grow a strong relationship between your hand and your eye as well as your pencil and your page. And also once you've done these exercises with pencil, try them out with different pens that you have and do the same sort of thing so you get to understand how your pen works. Use your favorite pen and then you can use a pen you really dislike if you have such a thing in your collection. And I cannot overemphasize how useful 
These kinds of exercises are to increase your drawing skills, but also to get to know different tools. For example, this pen I'm using right now is pressure sensitive. So it's like a sturdy, like a hard brush pen. So I'm practicing parallel lines and also the different pressure I can put on it and what effect it gets. Okay, so the next thing to do, and I'm sure you've all seen this in many drawing books and other videos, so I won't labor this point too much, is blind contour drawing. So for those of you that don't know what that is, pick a subject like your hand or a cup in front of you. I think a hand is a bit more fun because it's a bit more challenging. Maybe you could try a shoe or something like that, but anything with an interesting outline. So put your pencil or pen on the page and start drawing the contour, i.e. the outline, of the subject in front of you without looking at your page. So you're only looking at the subject you're drawing and you're moving your eye around the edge of the shape and following it with your pencil. So I can promise you the results will be awful, but if you keep doing this exercise regularly, it will really strengthen that eye hand bond and coordination. So I'm thinking 30 days of blind contour drawing anyone? I feel a challenge coming on. <laughs> Okay, next. And by the way, I don't expect you to be doing all of these exercises right now. Save this video, come back to it, build your own practice schedule. I'll reference musicians again, as that's kind of a context I'm familiar with, but it's like sitting down at the piano and running through your scales, arpeggios, intervals, practicing time signatures, different rhythms, all that technical stuff. So we don't get away without doing that stuff as sketches too, not if you actually want to get better anyway. And no judgment here, I've actually actively avoided this stuff. <laughs> but 2022 is the year, guys. I want to build up my sketching game. I want to actively improve my abilities. And I'm not really sure what that's going to look like yet, but I know exercising and practicing essential skills will be an important part of this journey. So this exercise is just straight up contour drawing, so there's no blind aspect to it, even though you might be thinking that I have got my eyes closed right now. <laughs> Obviously I need to practice drawing hands uh, better, because at the moment I've got spaghetti fingers, but that's fine, you know. You've got to keep practicing. So as mentioned, it's the same as the last exercise, only this time you can look at your page. So you want to be flicking your eyes back and forward between your hand or the subject you're drawing and your page constantly and trying to slowly follow the outline of the thing that you're looking at. On to continuous line drawings. I love the outcomes of continuous line drawings. They just feel so loose and free, even though there's an element of constriction. Um, so the idea here is to draw something without lifting your pen off the page at all. It's so interesting that being restricted in this way, not allowed to lift your pen off the page, it actually can help your sketch feel so much looser, freer and playful. So the more you do this one, the more your results will improve. And I think you may even find yourself using this technique in your actual sketching out on location or otherwise. There are definitely a f um, sketchers I know of who sketch in this way and it's a fundamental part of their technique. Inma Serrano like springs to mind instantly, but there are so many more examples. So this one's really, really fun. And I am using that pen, the pressure sensitive pen that I was using um, a bit earlier in the video. I think it's, um, it's not a Tombow. I think it's a zebra, but Tombow also do one. I th off the top of my head, it's called a Fuden Fudenesco or something like that. And it's like a hard tip brush pen. I think it's for like more Chinese or Japanese lettering, that kind of thing you can use them for, but they're really fun to draw with because you can get that different thickness of line weight, that variation of line weight. But anyway, that's what I'm, I've decided to use for this drawing. And as you can see in the bottom left hand corner, that's what I'm drawing. It's just the top of my tripod head and it was just there across the desk as I was contemplating this video. So I was like, oh, that would actually be really fun because it's just got so many interesting shapes um, to it. So there are a few moments here where you'll see I do accidentally take my pen off the page, but more as just like a rest rather than moving around. So <laughs> um, and then I'm like, oh, 
damn, I need to put my pen back on the page. And I think I do lift off altogether in a second and just move across to start another area. But I think that's fine. I mean, obviously, this is a, an exercise and the idea is to keep it loose, you know, just to loosen you up. And it really works. I, I really, really love this exercise. So if there's one exercise that you take from this video, please try this one. All right, next exercise is drawing everything with a brush pen. I mean, if the... If that's something that you have or want to get, this is a really valuable exercise. Uh, whether you use brush pens normally in your work or not, as they're kind of a halfway house between a pen and a brush. So gaining some kind of mastery over expressing yourself with a brush pen can have an excellent like knock-on effect to mastering other tools as well. It also strengthens your dexterity and the control that you have in your hand. So in this exercise, I saw this um, my lucky cat that I have up on my shelf and I thought okay let's have a go at drawing that in a brush pen um, so <laughs> not the best drawing in the world but again I'm sharing these with you guys to let you know that no one's going to do these exercises perfectly they're exercises that's not the point of them you know but the more and more you do these things the more it's gonna strengthen your skill and confidence so it's just like a win-win-win Okay, and so the last one for today, and I actually only discovered this very recently from seeing a, a pretty old video on Proko's channel, where the artist demonstrates something he learned from his mentor, and it's called automatic drawing. So basically, it seems to me the essence is to just doodle, like straight out of your mind. Um, so drawing organic shapes, building from one to the next, just drawing freely, with no plan, reference, not trying to make it into anything in particular. And, you know, this kind of technique in the hands of an artist, uh, like in Proko's video, I mean, the results are stunning. But for us ordinary folk, well, we can just have loads of fun with this. And it's also an excellent way to warm up before drawing, getting used to your hand moving across the page, moving pencil or pen or brush across the page and getting used to how that connects with the surface. And you can do this with any medium. You don't need to do this with a pencil. In fact, the artist in Proko's video is using pencil, but he mentions that his mentor used to do it with ink and watercolor. Um, my demonstration here, I'm just using brightly colored by, like ballpoint pens. It's really fun doing organic shapes, but then I switched to a pink pen and I thought, well, maybe let's just do more architectural structural shapes just to see how that is. And then I was like, oh, maybe I should try this with a brush pen and see how that works. Just have loads of fun and just fill your page with just whatever comes out of your head. And I think it's just a really nice way to warm up and also relax into drawing. And you don't have to do this for long. You could just do it for a few minutes. You could make small doodles or you could make, you could go all in and do this for like an hour and create like cover an entire page. I'm actually quite keen to try it with ink and watercolor and just really make some abstract crazy nonsense. And I mean that in the most literal way, like no sense. I think it's actually a nice way just to be present with yourself. It's like a mindfulness exercise almost where you're not worrying about what it's going to look like or turn out to be or whether it's going to look like the thing you're trying to draw because it's just totally out of your imagination. So I think this, this one has loads of benefits to it, so I really recommend giving it a go. And you can watch the original video where I got this idea from um, over on Proko's channel. I'll put the link in the description below. So if you're interested in practicing together with other like-minded people, we are checking out Perspective over on Patreon at the moment. We've just done week one and started week two. So we've done one, one point perspective and now we're on two point perspective. And I share with you a video of me practicing these skills as well as giving you reference photos for, your, for you to try out for yourself as well. So loads of learning going on there, lots of practice. 2022 is the year, we're gonna build up our sketching skills. So yeah, come and join us. And for the month of February, I think we're going to be playing with the technique of painting first and then drawing on top, which is just so much fun. So head over to Patreon, link in description below, and hope to see you over there.